Planning Commissioners and the public for your participation today. My name is Dee Oliver and I'm the Chair of the Virginia Beach Planning Commission and welcome to the June 10th, 2020 virtual informal session of the Virginia Beach Planning Commission. I call this meeting to order. Today's informal session is being conducted electronically in accordance with the Virginia Code Section 2.2-3708.2A3. Virginia Code Section 15.2-1413 and the City's Continuity of Government Ordinance adopted on March 31st, 2020 and Chapter 854 of the 2019 Acts of Assembly as amended with me, the Chair of the Virginia Beach Planning Commission, having called a special meeting for today's public informal session and public hearing. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. I will now pass the microphone over to the planning director for comments and to review our procedures for today's meeting. Mr. DeHaan. Thank you, Chairman Oliver. Uh, before we get into staff's review of the agenda, I do want to let the commission know that uh, city council yesterday passed a resolution that refer refers four amendments of the zoning ordinance uh, related to short-term rentals to the planning commission for review and recommendations. Uh, recently, I believe it was last year, last July or so, the, um, there was an amendment that requires for um, items that are referred by the City Council to the Planning Commission to be brought back to the City Council within 100 days. So we do have a very tight timeline in order to provide proper public input for these four items. So the items which we will send to you electronically, uh, since these are the ones that we have in front of us at this moment, are to amend the civil penalties uh, for violations of the requirements of short-term rentals, uh, to uh, alter or amend the, the requirements of, the, of what is considered a grandfathered uh, STR, and also to add council findings, which would give us the opportunity to review a lot of the things that you've talked about uh, through a lot of our discussions through short-term rentals previously. And then also um, more focused in to, to amend section 1903, uh, uh, regarding permitted uses in the Old Beach Overlay District. Uh, council does have many questions, but this was sponsored by Councilman Tower, and Councilman Tower first focused in on, on this one portion. If the commission feels that we need to uh, make a motion to uh, look at short the short-term rental regulations in general, I believe that was so the general direction we got from council last night was that they would hope that the Planning Commission looked generally. but. Um, I'm still unsure of what direction that means moving forward. Um, so we will continue to look for continued direction. And then also uh, section D, uh, though may not be amendment, an amendment, it is part of the uh, adopting resolution, which is the, uh, the requirements for transition rules for conditional use permit applications in the Old Beach Overlay District. That one essentially states that if you are uh, under application, you, you essentially go you have to meet whatever rules at the time it's con uh, is adopted at the time it's considered. So if the new rules are adopted and you're still in the pipeline, you will have to meet the new rules. Okay. 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 There are, I know there's plenty of discussion on this. I, I do believe we need to hold potentially a special, I know that we've just done a bunch of special sessions, but I think we need to do as we can meet in person, an in-person workshop uh, to knock this out. But I do want to focus on the requirement of the Old Beach of what's been sent to us by council because we do have that 100 day requirement. Um, I will, because this is a hot button issue for the commissioners, I will open it for questions. I know this is going off the script. I apologize. There may be hands raised at this moment. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. So we will, I will contact you, Ms. Oliver, to try to set up a special session meeting. Oh, uh, yes, we, uh, we have a question from Mr. Wayne, from Commissioner Weiner. Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Mr. Todd, um, about the grandfathering, what are they looking to do? Take away the grandfathering? Are they looking to um, make it longer or longer, shorten it up to another time? Any idea on that? Yes, Mr. Weiner. The grandfathering is to align with the requirements for legal nonconformities. Uh, grandfathering was a term that was created when the short-term rental ordinance was adopted and it didn't have essentially it didn't have uh, a 
a policy that said that if it was discontinued for more than two years, it would go away. We do want to make sure we clear that up. We do treat the grandfathered short-term rentals similar to legal nonconformities, so we do want to make sure we clean that up. But that's essentially what that is. Staff acknowledges the virtual hand raised by Commissioner Redmond. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I just want to let folks know if you watched any of last night's council meeting, I happened to be watching the council meeting last night when they considered the short term rental um, applications. And I want everyone to know that they are every bit as uncertain, disjointed, confused, and frustrated as we are. Um, you know, if you're looking, um, David, for uh, there's not an answer to your question, Mr. Weiner. The idea of what is it they're looking for, they don't know. Is my um, is my impression from last night? Uh, each one individually might or have some indications, um, or, or some you know some assumptions, but 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 there's nothing even approaching consensus um, from what I could see, and that's not a surprise to me, very frankly. Um, so in any case, I think it's going to be a um, it's going to be a challenge. Thanks, Bill. Staff acknowledges the virtual hand raised by Commissioner Inman. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, <clears throat> I hear what uh, Dave Redmond said, and uh, it was very interesting that he had an opportunity to 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 watch that last night. Um, I think that uh, it's really good that we actually have something submitted to us for uh, discussion and consideration at this point in time. I, I was not all that hopeful we would have it by now, although I knew that Councilman Tower was working on that and um, hoped to have something uh, as of last night. So that that's good, that's progress. I think we need to meet as soon as we can to move this along because uh, if it's true that we have 100, over 100 applications in the pipeline, uh, we, this is a serious matter for disruption of neighborhoods that we need to do what we can to fix that as soon as we can. Staff acknowledges the virtual hand raised by Commissioner Weiner. Planning Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Um, yes, I agree with Mr. Inman. We need to move on this as soon as possible. I, I, if we only have 100 days, I don't think this is going to happen overnight. Um, it may take one or two meetings to, for this to happen for us to come to come come up with something. Um, so any as soon as possible, we can get this moving. That would be best, in my opinion. Acknowledges the hand raised by Commissioner Oliver. Mr. Um, Mr. Dehan, I think we you if you would set a meeting or throw out some dates as quickly as possible and let's get this on so we can get it on our agenda as fast as we can and present it back to council. I do know, as um, Mr. Inman stated, that um, Councilman Tower has been working on this for quite some time. And now that we have the opportunity to make something happen, um, I think that the sooner we can get this done, the better off Virginia Beach is gonna be. <laughs> yes, ma'am, before the end of the week, we'll send dates out uh, confirming or trying to set up a time for us to meet in person uh, and we'll find an appropriate location and post appropriately for a for a inform for a workshop meeting for the planning commission great staff acknowledges the virtual hand raised by commissioner redmond planning commissioner redmond your mic is open for comment thank you thank you bill um i would note um I agree with everything that everybody said. However, um, I, I do think there is also some sentiment, Mike, um, on council to go well beyond the items that they referred to us about how to deal with, uh, you know, um, grandfathering. I mean, I think there's a significant um, undercurrent that uh, there's more that's required than just the things you're going to send us. So, Bobby, I would what I would hope that we can do, what, what I'd be looking for from you guys is some sort of indication about how, about how much we can do, how far we can go. Um, and we've had these conversations before, 
Um, I, I don't know that this is really kind of a tinker around the margins kind of thing. I mean, kind of, I think I'm sounding like Mike and I am intending to sound like Mike to the extent that um, I think the issue is broader than just a little, you know, a little bit of uh, nipping and tucking uh, at the margins here. So I'm kind of trying to understand how much, how far we can go. I'm really comfortable with that term, but I don't know what the extent of um, our ability as we conceive this is to um, come up with changes to the ordinance that are necessary and address what Mike's trying to address and namely the protection of neighborhoods. And I, you know, there's, I watched a lot of frustration last night on behalf of, of council members with their own process. Um, and so I, I think the entire process has to be looked at, not just um, the, 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 the marginal stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of advocating for a deeper dive into the issue than just kind of um, you know, putting lipstick, some more lipstick on it. So I'll shut up now. Thank you. And raised by Commissioner Inman. Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. I think that we um, would do ourselves a good service by watching the rerun, so to speak, a recording of the city council meeting that uh, Dave just uh, related to us. It sounds like there's a lot to be gained for our own understanding and knowledge about how this is, how they're thinking and what we might do in our meetings. So I'm gonna take a look at that. Staff acknowledges the virtual hand raised by Planning Commissioner Weiner. Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tahan, this is uh, to you and uh, staff and, and even Mrs. Wilson. Um, a couple of years ago when we were digging into this and a lot of people I know it's a lot of work and y'all have to do a lot of work to get this done, but I really think we might want to look at overlay districts. Um, that was a big uh, step in one direction that we didn't want to go in because of the fact that so much work to, to who's going to draw the boundary lines, what overlay district where, but that may help out some neighborhoods too, um, in my opinion, to look at some overlay districts. Just a thought. Um we have already done so. Mr. Um, Jones pulled out his old overlay district um, right. um, version of the ordinance. And um, I believe that the sky's the limit. Anything you want to look at, I think council would be fine with that. But you got to remember that we got to watch um, creating too many nonconformities. And um, to completely dismantling is something we should, should think long and hard about. Not that you can't do it. But I think we need to look at a lot of the things that have gone into reality. And so we'll, well, Bobby will schedule that meeting for us all and we'll get together and talk about everything. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, commissioners, for your, for your input. As I said, we will schedule or at least put out dates and locations <clears throat> for our meetings and I know we'll have to do multiple <clears throat> meetings um, uh, to handle this workload um, as Ms. Wilson said as long as it deals with health safety welfare and morality you can do just about anything with your zoning regulations so we will uh, staff has already kind of taken a look at what that what that could look like utilizing uh, many different avenues so we will we will bring something back to you which I know I was not here for your process and I know you probably went through each of these iterations and I apologize if I start bringing things up and you you say that that we talked about that four three years ago which is probably the, the facts so all right as we continue to move forward we do not have any presentations uh, today to keep uh, our agenda as brief as possible uh, but there are 34 items on today's public hearing agenda staff will provide a summary of each application this morning before the public hearing uh, two applications are requesting a deferral agenda item number six and 12 and during this informal session the planning commission will also determine the consent agenda noting any items where opposition has signed up will not be eligible for consent before we begin with the briefings i've asked bill to review how we will run the, this portion of the meeting thank you i i do acknowledge the virtual hand raised by planning commissioner inman planning commissioner inman your mic is open for comment thank you 
Thank you, Bill. I uh, just didn't get this question in before that last uh, discussion was closed. I'm wondering if, if there was any discussion at council uh, about a moratorium uh, on processing these applications. And is the volume what I read in the newspaper was um, uh, it was 180 or something at that point, 10 days, 12 days ago, when I saw this article in the paper? Uh, Mr. Inman, that is the volume that we have had in total of, of conditional use permit applications. We do have, uh, uh, I believe, um, 100 or so in the pipeline at this moment, um, if you add in today's agenda items. So uh, there is no discussion of the moratorium word. Uh, it is a tough one as we get in through, through land use where uh, we are concerned about our ability to do such a, such a thing. However, uh, I believe the transition rules that Mr. Tower has requested to put in place are, are as, as firm as you can get. Uh, to be honest with you, any items that are submitted now won't get on an agenda by the time this gets back to City Council. So I believe that there's a, everyone is on notice at this point that uh, if, they, if they apply, they will be under whatever regulations are in place the minute that their application is heard, even if it's the same agenda. So if the council approves the zoning ordinance text amendment that day before their items, all the items that are that heard that day will have to meet that requirement. Oh, wow. So uh, I, I, we will put that put uh, applicants on notice for that and understanding that there is a concern from both the commission and council. So thank you. Planning commissioners and staff, Please mute any additional devices you have in the room to avoid any unnecessary background noise and or the possibility of echoing and reverberation. When your name is called to be recognized to speak, please pause for three seconds to ensure that your microphone is unmuted and all hear your complete remarks. Please begin your comments by identifying yourself. Also, do not ask, can you hear me? as only one feed is open at a time to minimize the echoing and reverberation. And as such, you'll be unable to hear a response. Staff will provide the commission with a summary of each of the applications scheduled for this afternoon's public hearing. Following each presentation, I will ask the commission if they have any questions. Planning commissioners, when you have a question following the staff brief, please raise your virtual hand and I will call on you. Are there any questions from the planning commission at this point? Seeing no virtual hands raised, we will move on to the staff briefings. Staff will now present an overview of each application to be considered by the Planning Commission at today's public hearing that begins at noon. We will change the slideshow on the screen. Item 1 is Vogue Lashes and Spa and will be presented by Wa Dow. Wa, you can begin your presentation. Thank you, Bill. This is a condition use permit request for a tattoo parlor to provide permanent makeup known as microblading within the 1900 square feet beauty salon. The property is located at 993 Laskin Road in the Beach District. The salon will occupy a portion of the 8,500 square feet retail building that was previously occupied by a retail business. The building is currently undergoing renovations to the exterior and interior. No expansion to the building footprint is proposed. Adequate parking is available on site from the adjacent distillery and movie theater through lease agreements as depicted on the parking layout. The subject property falls within the 70 to 75 noise zone in the APZ2 of the ACRUS. Tattoo parlor is a compatible use within this zone of the ACRUS. There is a non-conforming freestanding sign on the property, and the, sign is, and the signs on the submitted renderings appear to be too large. As it is typical to bring sites into compliance, the, a condition is recommended that all signs be in conformance with the requirements of the, C, of the city zoning ordinance. The proposed use will renovate the existing retail building to a modern and high quality design building for office and retail uses, which will attract much needed life to this former vacant retail building. The site is surrounded by commercial properties, and as required by the zoning ordinance, 
there, are, there is no other tattoo parlor within 600 feet of this request. Staff is not aware of any opposition to this request and is recommending approval of this request subject to the conditions stated in the report. That concludes my summary. I will stand by for any questions of the Planning Commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any Planning Commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to the next application. The next three items, items two, three, and four, will be presented by Marshall Coleman. Thank you, Bill. This is an application for a modification of conditions for a religious use located at 4853 Princess Anne Road. The church was granted several conditional use permits by city council in the mid to late 80s to add a Sunday school building and a parking lot extension with a picnic shelter. In 2003, a conditional use permit was granted to build a columbarium, and in 2008, a conditional use permit was granted to construct a supervised residential facility for adults. But this building was never built. The applicant is now requesting to add a 2,800 square foot, one story administrative office building on the northeast corner of the church. The building will include office and meeting spaces, two restrooms, and a break room. The exterior facade of the proposed building addition will consist of vertical metal panel siding with a brick veneer foundation. Staff is unaware of any opposition to this request and is recommending approval subject to the conditions in the report. That concludes my summary, and I'll stand by to answer any questions of the commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Yes, yeah, so I uh, say I'm good with this being on the consent agenda. Hands raised. We will move on to the next application, item three. Marshall. Thank you, Bill. This is an application for a conditional use permit for an automotive repair garage to install a paint booth at property located at 5044 Cleveland Street. This automotive repair garage has been operating on this site since the building was constructed in 1970. At that time, this use was permitted without the need for a conditional use permit. The applicant is now seeking to expand the business to include auto collision services and to install a paint booth, so a conditional use permit is now required. There will be no changes to the exterior of the building. All the work and the storage of materials will occur within the building. The existing parking on the site can accommodate the automotive repair garage as well as the auto collision services. As per section 203 of the zoning ordinance, the minimum parking requirement is exceeded by 14 spaces. There is a 20-foot non-conforming freestanding sign on the property that has been on the site since 1970. Under the current zoning ordinance, a freestanding sign can be no taller than 12 feet in height. The existing sign does not meet this requirement, so a condition has been added to remove the sign, and the applicant is agreeable to this. The applicant is proposing to add a six foot by three foot sign to the building as shown here, and this sign meets the requirement of the zoning ordinance. The property is located in the Central Village District of the Pembroke SGA. While there are similar uses in the vicinity, the use is not consistent with the comprehensive plan's recommendation. However, the automotive repair garage is deemed appropriate as an interim use until the surrounding area begins to develop. There is also a planned CIP project for Cleveland Street scheduled for construction in 2023 to construct a four-lane, 90-foot-wide divided roadway. The applicant's proposal to add an interior Paint booth does not require a major change to the use or major investment to the site improvements. So staff has added a condition that pro will provide administrative review by the plan director 10 years after city council approval to ensure that the use continues to be compatible with the area and meets the comprehensive plan. Staff is not aware of any opposition to this request and is recommending approval subject to the conditions in the report. That concludes my summary and I'll stand by for any questions. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, 
as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Thank you, Bill. Um, if you're familiar with this part of the city, there's an awful lot of redevelopment activity occurring. So uh, in this case, the notion of an interim use, I think, is, is dead on money. It's, um, I don't know that a lot of properties around here are always going to be in their existing uses because there, there frankly, is a lot of pressure on, um, on land and assets in this, in this part of the city, which we've been trying to um, uh, encourage for a very, very long time. Uh, and that's a good thing. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, this is entirely appropriate in my view for consent. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, I concur with Dave. And uh, what happens, I'm, I'm curious, after, after 10 years, let's say it's not um, consistent, um, you know, compatible with the uses in the surrounding area. And it's just, you know, this is similar to other, other applications. I'm just, uh, you know, just pushing the question. You know, it gets reviewed by the... Uh, by the planning director. So let's say in 10 years that it's like, well, you know, this, this area has changed. Um, then what? Then they just, the conditional use permit gets pulled and uh, the individual can no longer you know, operate in that location. Is that, is that correct? Mr. Wall, thank you for the question. The, uh, the timeline will allow us to review the conditional use permit and if we, Deem it as not appropriate, we're putting them on notice that we'll bring it back to City Council for the potential revocation of the conditional use permit to stop the use. Um, again, it, it is just the potential. More than likely, as Mr. Redmond noted, there is pressure in this area and large buildings of this manner tend to get the first look sometimes um, just because they're easier to, to renovate. But um, before we would go to any drastic measures, we're, we are sure that we would talk to the applicant or talk to the owner, whoever may, that may be at the time, or if it's the same person. And, and either try to help them look at redevelopment potential or other, other options. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. I'm not sure how this would be affected, but um, it would be nice to be able to give the owner of that property some notice, I mean, more than six months or two months or whatever, more like a year or two that it was the view of staff or the city or whomever that the area is sufficiently changed that their use permit may be in jeopardy uh, and when it expires uh, in a year or year and a half, whatever it is. That, that's one alternative. And the other is just that we would say, well, certainly it wouldn't be fair to give somebody who's in a business like that Three months notice, six months notice, you know, you're done. Uh, it, I, so that would be likely an extension of the use permit for a year or two in order to let, allow that business owner to transition. Maybe that's the more likely result. But certainly they, they need to have, they can't be told you're done and it was six months notice or so. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Enman, thank you. The, so the condition is for 10 years. We, we won't just uh, show up at the doorstep and tell them that, they, that we don't believe they're compatible. We will work with them when we get to that point. Again, market conditions will play a lot into that. If market conditions are similar as they are now um, and there is no movement on the property, then, then it will be okay. But it, we, we, will, we will notify them and allow them the opportunity to relocate. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Uh, thank you, and this is uh, this is for Marshall. And uh, the question is: Do they uh, do they plan to keep that fence with the barbed wire on it? Is that part of the? Um, I guess just part of the facilities. I'm just curious. Do they consider putting slats in there to shield um, shield the view there for the um, enclosure that they've got? Hence, they have not, we have not discussed putting in slats for um, the fence, but we could add that if you feel that is a condition. But the, the fence will remain as it is. 
to add on to that, Mr. Wall, you do have, if you are uncomfortable with the current design of that fence, you can also condition that they remove the barbed wire and require the slats, as Ms. Coleman had noted. So uh, that is something that, that is with this land use that you can, you can condition. Mr. Wall, did that answer your question? It, first of all, it does, and uh, you know, obviously that does answer the question. The answer is no. Um, and uh, the second one is, or it's not necessarily a question. I mean, I, I think that would be an improvement. You know, over time, though, the slots break, they um, they fade, you know, they no longer look the, um, at what, you know, the, they don't have the same integrity that they had when they were installed. And, uh, you know, that's just the nature of, of those of those slats but so so that would be you know the removal of the barbed wire um and the installation of the slats i i think that would be an improvement um and i think that would be a, a good a, addition um to this if they're going to maintain that fence that if we um you know the color of their choice i don't think slats are that expensive um, that shield the um, shield the view to the roadway. I feel that that's a um, an appropriate request, appropriate condition to add. I'll talk to the applicant. Go ahead, Ms. Planning Commissioner Oliver. Hey, Mr. Wall. I just um, I'd like to ask the applicant before I'm. In total agreement with the slats um, for aesthetics, but I'd like to ask him, is there a purpose or a reason behind the barbed wire? Sometimes when somebody has that on a fence, it's due to the fact that they've had some issues in the past. And I don't want to, if that's his way of protecting his property, um, I don't know that I want to take, I don't, I don't want to take that away from him um, just because of aesthetics. So if there's a reason for that to be there, then you know maybe we need to talk to him about that. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Thank you, uh, Bill. D, I think you kind of are right, are right where the, that issue is. I'm uncomfortable, Jack, with the, adding that condition. That's a security issue. The idea that you can see into that lot from the street with appropriate lighting and traffic is a part of the security scheme. If you go and you put slats in there, number one, I don't think slats are any more attractive than anything else. When I see slats and chain link fences, I don't think they look particularly attractive, but um, this facility's operated there for a very long time, so far as I can tell, without any incident. And uh, I'll repeat, this neck of the woods is getting an awful lot of redevelopment activity and it's not inconceivable to me that in the near future that this and a bunch of other properties are going to be redeveloped and i don't want to go telling people go and change the property in a way that a might reduce the security of your lot and b might be a waste of money if three years from now the property is bought and redeveloped into something else at the same time, with the facility that's operated without incident, so far as I can tell, for a long time, it doesn't, to me, seem to be broke. It's not the most attractive thing, um, but, you know, that's the kind of use that it is. And there are facilities like this all over the city and certainly in areas like this where they're, you know, where the, those kinds of uses predominate. So I, it just strikes me as, A, unnecessary in some ways, and B, um, it could be detrimental to the security of, you know, of this property, and I wouldn't want to do that. So I'm, I'm not comfortable with that, Jack. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. Thank you all for, um, for that input. And, you know, it's, it's certainly open to, um, open to, you know, opinion to, uh, to thoughts and, you know, that was just an idea for betterment of the, uh, of the facility of that property, you know, especially along, you know, corridor that's going to be improved, you know, has a CIP uh, for a you know, 90 foot right away. But, um, you know, with that, with that, you know, I'll just, um, uh, it was more just, you know, an idea, um, a thought, and I, I don't think it has to go any further than that. 
Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Jack, thanks for that. Um, I just, uh, before we leave this, I just want to reiterate, this is an exciting part of the city. There is a lot of redevelopment going on. Um, and when that redevelopment occurs, um, particularly in places where there are lots of industrial properties, you get an awful lot of benefits. A lot of them are aesthetic. Um, uh, there's increased commerce. Um, certainly, um, we have far, far better stormwater management in some places that never had a lick of it to begin with. So um, I spent a lot of time around this neck of the woods um, and it's one of those things that really put some spring in my step. So if you take nothing else from this application, um, I, hope you'll, um, I hope you'll be heartened that there are really good things happening in parts of our city. And this is one part of our city where really good things are happening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to the next application, item four, also presented by Marshall. Thank you. This is an application for a conditional use permit for a family daycare home located at 1674 Dillon Drive in the Brandon neighborhood. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to care for up to 12 children. While the request is to care for up to 12 children, the applicant is expecting to care for no more than six within this semi-detached dwelling. The 4,890 foot parcel has an enclosed fenced in backyard for the children to play outdoors. Staff is unaware of any opposition to this request and is recommending approval subject to the conditions in the report. That includes my summary and I'll stand by for any questions. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Yes, Mr. Lanfair, I just want to say I'm good for consent on this one also. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to application number four, presented by Jonathan Sanders. I'm sorry, number five, presented by Jonathan Sanders, which is a request for a conditional use permit by Incredible Tattoo LLC. Can you go to the next slide, please? Jonathan, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Boulevard, next slide. The applicant is required. Start again. A black to green channel letter sign. Jonathan, would you please start again? Answer any questions that you have. We were unable to hear him. Jonathan, we were unable to hear your briefing. Could you please start again? Sure. Can you hear me? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, next slide, please. This next item is located within a shopping center along General Booth Boulevard. Next slide. The applicant is requesting to operate a tattoo parlor within a unit of the shopping center. Next slide. A green to black channel letter sign is proposed to be mounted on the building. The size of the sign meets the standards in the zoning ordinance. Staff recommends approval subject to the typical conditions for tattoo parlors in chapter 23 of the city code. I'm not aware of any opposition on this request. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. 
Seeing no more hands raised, the next item, item number six, is requesting a deferral in order to allow the applicant additional time to refine the request. We expect to see this on the July 8th Planning Commission agenda. Based on this, the next presentation is for item number seven by Whitney McNamara. Whitney, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this application is for Lorna C. Donatone at 1421 and 1423 Blue Heron Road for a community boat dock. Next slide, please. Um, here's the aerial photograph showing the two properties that share this boat dock. Next slide, please. So the application is to replace the existing boat dock in the same footprint. The uh, dock was damaged last year during Hurricane Dorian. And when the applicant came in with their joint permit application to repair the dock, they were told by zoning that they would need a conditional use permit um, since this was an older dock that did not originally have one. Next slide, please. Um, here are some pictures showing the docks. So this one is from the property looking out over the water. As you can see, it's right on the property line between the two. Next slide, please. Um, here's a picture looking back up towards the two properties. Next slide. Here's another picture just showing a different view of the dock. And I have one more picture on the next slide. And then next slide, please. Um, so that concludes my summary. As I said, this is just to replace what's there. Um, and it's a dock that's been there since pre 2000. They're just trying to bring it up to current codes and requirements. Um, I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Here, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to item eight, presented by the zoning administrator, Kevin Kemp, which is an ordinance to amend section 201 of the city zoning ordinance pertaining to setbacks for in-ground pools adjacent to the Atlantic Ocean. Mr. Kemp, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Thank you, Bill, and good morning, Planning Commissioners. Uh, this ordinance amendment uh, is for in-ground pools only. What it would do is reduce the setback from the property line adjacent to the Atlantic Ocean from its current uh, 20 feet to five feet. Next slide, please. Uh, what you are seeing here on the right is an old plat. Uh, although there is beach there, there is actually Old Atlantic Avenue, which is a flatted, unimproved right of way. Therefore, these lots that are oceanfront are actually actually through lots and have a 20 foot rear yard setback. Um, the area, which I will get to in the next slide, between the property line and the beach is public right of way, but for all intents and purposes is owned by the property. This amendment would only impact the R7.5 properties, the R5R properties. The amendment was already done uh, back in 2010. Here is a diagram showing what I'm talking about. Uh, there is a seawall, then there is approximately 30 feet of public right of way, and then 20 feet of uh, private property. The setback for a pool is taken from the property line. Uh, given that there is a current 20 foot setback every time a oceanfront property would desire to put in a pool, it would go to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, what this would do is reduce the setback, giving more area for the pool. Um, just as a note, all these property owners do have an agreement with the city to use that area of unapproved right away. However, no structures such as pools or gazebos or sheds can be put in there. Next slide, please. And this graphic just gives you an idea of the approximately 30 properties that this amendment uh, impacts. Uh, there's been three BZA variances for in-ground pools in recent years as these uh, properties redevelop and the older homes, um, you know, that trend comes. We anticipate more Board of Zoning Appeals variances going forward. 
if this amendment weren't passed. So the goal is to code this to minimize uh, uh, the load going to the BZA, uh, which you know these have gone there and been approved at 100% rate. So if there are no questions, um, that is what this amendment is about. Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, the next items on the agenda are requests for short-term rentals. Item number nine is You're Not Alone, LLC, and will be presented by Marshall Coleman. Marshall, you can begin your presentation. Thank you, Bill. This is an application for a conditional use permit for a short-term rental located at 207 79th Street, Unit C. The duplex dwelling was constructed in 1986. Only Unit C is under consideration for this conditional use permit. The duplex has three bedrooms and requires three on-site parking spaces. An alternative parking plan was reviewed and approved by the zoning administrator as parking space two is deficient in width by one foot. The parking space is eight feet by 18 feet rather than the standard nine feet by 18 feet, but still meets the size requirement for a compact car space. The third parking space is located within the driveway, but is technically within the right of way. However, the space gives the appearance of being on private property. The public right-of-way begins at the sidewalk on 79th Street. This is common along 79th Street. With the potential of the third parking space blocking the sidewalk, Condition 3 has been added, requiring the installation of an all-weather, no-blocking sign to be posted on the owner's private property. The applicant submitted a rendering of the sign, and it was approved by the zoning administrator for location, material, and content. Staff believes that the third parking space can be accommodated within the driveway without inconvenience to the public. Staff is unaware of any opposition to this request and is recommending approval subject to the conditions in the report. That concludes my summary and I'll stand by for any questions. Staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, <coughs> including if this can be placed on the consent agenda. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Okay, so I'm understanding that we have a parking space that is in the city right of way. Is that correct? Say again. That is correct. The third parking space is, is within the city right of way, but it's also within the driveway. Planning Commissioner? Edmund, your mic is open for comment. I have a problem with that um, in general. The um, ordinance says that parking must be on site. Uh, I know that it also has uses another term in another section of the ordinance, but I'm kind of wed to the on site concept because I think this is sort of a privilege to, to have a use permit um, for this purpose, and um, I would vote against uh, an application that has uh, use of the city right of way. Planning Commissioner Alcaraz, your mic is open for comment. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I, I agree with Mr. Enman. Um, we've got an ordinance for required parking off site, and it's got to meet that, or I can't. Uh, I can't approve it. Thank you. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. My apology, I forgot to unmute. Planning Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Um, well, sounds like we're gonna hear this. Um, so my question is, what does it say now in the ordinance and why is staff proposing to approve it? If it's in the uh, right of way uh, parking, the third parking space is in the right of way, but it's still off street parking. It's it's not on street parking. Uh, where do we stand now with that and what we've approved in our ordinance? I know we've gone through this before. I just want to ask the question again. Uh, Planning Director Tahan. 
Mr. Weiner, I'll, I'll probably hand this over to Mr. Kemp, but uh, if it is, if the parking space has been clearly in what is considered their driveway, uh, as we know that there are locations that there is a large distance of property between the edge of pavement or the curb and the actual uh, building. And so because of that, if it's clearly their driveway and clearly a location where another person cannot block uh, their parking, if it was a regular uh, residential use, uh, the, the staff has approved that type of parking layout. This one is different because it does have a, a sidewalk that's sitting really far from the street in an odd location that we wouldn't normally uh, do in this fashion uh, with future projects. Uh, so, uh, but it is, as, as Mr. Inman and Mr. Alcarez noted, this is something you can consider uh, when you do, if you choose to um, vote, when you, when you choose, when you do your vote. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, it, to be consistent and fair, I think we have approved applications with um, with parking that has been, you know, off off street, but um, you know, within the right of way. But I, I do see that you know, one of the parking spaces, you know, is smaller than the typical space, the nine by eighteen space. So. So with that, you know, even though it's um, it's fairly fairly minor, um, yeah, I think we've been pretty pretty set on the the size of the spaces and what's required. So I mean, I'd, I'd be fine with hearing it. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. I've been all over the map. I've been all over the map on this, and uh, it's interesting to go back to last night's. Council hearing one of the words that kept kept coming up was it was consistency and a desire for consistency and I, you know, it's just hard to come up with on the, on all these differing applications. What I'm looking for here is to try and figure out where the harm is. There are lots of city rights of way that, in my view, are simply excessive, and infringe upon properties for no reason. I don't think it's at all within the realm of possibility that we'll be widening 79th Street to four lanes anytime soon. Um, and I don't know what the purpose of, um, of, uh, of infringing upon this driveway is if there's no real purpose to it. So, um, I, and, I, and I hear you, Mike, I've been on that side of it too with you. Um, as I said, uh, consistency is hard thing to come by in these applications, but I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out where the harm here is and I'm not seeing it yet. Um, other than just, you know, kind of a, a philosophical one as opposed to something real. So we'll discuss all this when we hear it. I don't wanna go on and on, but that's kind of where I am. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Well, I am looking for consistency. And I admit that we have not had consistency so far, but we got a hundred applications to go. And these uh, North End situations present different, particularly North End, I'm sure it happens other places too with this right away that's not paved and used for private purposes in essence. So, but those, those uh, situations we will see will vary. Every time there's gonna be a little different tweak to it, just like this one. We got the sidewalk thing. We didn't have that before. And, and if you want consistency, you go with what the statute, that the ordinance says. Ordinance says off-site, I mean, on-site parking is required. So on-site parking. End of story. That's the, way I, that's the way I see it, to have consistency. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to the next two applications, which will be presented by Walked Out. Wall, you can begin your presentation. Thank you, Bill. Item 10 is a conditional use permit request to operate a two-bedroom short-term rental within Unit A of a triplex at 2312 Red Tide Road in the Bayside District. Two parking spaces are required for the proposed two-bedroom short-term rental. The submitted parking plan shows two parking spaces on site along the northern side yard. Yesterday, staff received one letter in opposition to this request. That, that letter was provided to the commission via email this morning. The objection noted that short-term rental doesn't fit with the character 
with the residential character of the community. This property is surrounded by duplex and multifamily dwellings and a hotel and a res restaurant to the west. Staff find, the proposal, staff find that the proposal can reasonably meet the requirements of section 241.2 of the CD ordinance for short-term rental. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of this request subject to the conditions stated in the report. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to the next application, item 11. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Thanks, Bill. Um, I don't see what's wrong with it. I think it's appropriate for consent. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to the next application, item 11. Wall. Thanks, Bill. Item 11 is a condition use permit request to operate a four bedroom short term rental within Unit A of a duplex at 1256th Street in the Lynn Haven District. Four parking spaces are required for the proposed four bedroom, bedroom short term rental. The submitted parking plan shows four parking spaces on site two in the driveway and two in the two car garage. As the as the construction plan for the duplex was submitted to the Development Service Center prior to January 16, 2019, the adoption date of the short-term rental regulation, the zoning administrator has allowed the garage spaces to be counted towards meeting the parking requirement. Staff is not aware of any opposition to this request and finds that the proposed short-term rental can reasonably meet the requirement of Section 241.2 of the city ordinance. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of this request subject to the conditions in the report. Staff would note that if the Planning Commission do act on this application today, condition one should be modified to strike out unit 112B, which is item 12 that, be, that is being requested for deferral. Condition one should be read as follows. The following condition shall only apply to the dwelling unit address as 112A 56th Street and the short-term rental use shall only occur in the principal structure. That's conclude my summary and I will stand by questions for any questions. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Uh, my apologies, I um, neglected to lower my hand from the last last time. Seeing no hands raised, the next item, item 12, is requesting an indefinite deferral in order to assess whether they want to pursue the conditional use permit. Based on this, the next presentation is for item number 13, CEBT Properties LLC, which I will present. This property is located at 201 64th Street. The site is 6,250 square feet in size and zoned R5R, located in the north end near the oceanfront. The property contains two single family dwellings, the dwelling, which is the subject of the short-term rental application, was built in 1940 and is located at the corner of 64th Street and Atlantic Avenue. There is no history of past code violations or city council actions for the property. This is a three-bedroom short-term rental. A maximum of nine guests would be permitted on the property. Three parking spaces are required. A total of three parking spaces will be provided on site as shown on the parking plan. With the lengthening of the existing driveway, 
to a total of 54 feet. Staff has heard from two neighbors who voiced concerns about the inherent nature of the use. Staff is recommending approval with the conditions found in the staff report. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Bill? Yes. I have a question. Did you say that um, you had two letters of opposition for this? They, they weren't letters. They, they were uh, phone calls. Yes. They were phone calls. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And no follow-up on that? No, ma'am. No. Thank you. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. I think that, you know, this has been discussed before, but so you're saying that at this point they don't have the, they don't have the parking, um, but, but they plan to expand to 54 feet. Is that, is that correct? Currently the, I'm sorry, that is correct. Currently the existing driveway provides for two parking spaces. They understand that they need to extend the length of the driveway to a total of 54 feet to accommodate the third parking space. Okay. Planning Commissioner Oliver. So I want to ask, the, because um, Dave started with us being, we're all trying to be consistent here with the parking. And so if memory serves me correct, have we not, and maybe Mike, you can answer this, um, in the past when we don't have parking, ask them to circle back through. And I'm asking um, Mr. Inman that actually, or maybe, or, or Mr. DeHaan, because it, it, this bothers me, because they don't have the parking now. So. And it's based on the fact that they're going to create the parking. Madam Chair, the, it's been done both ways um, at the discretion of the applicant. So if they do not have the parking and they need to pave it or proper, properly improve it, we do normally put a condition prior to them being able to operate the short-term rental. Reason being is if, for those that were able to watch uh, council last night, there was an applicant that paved their yard in accordance with the code but pave the whole front yard instead right. of doing a different layout. And so uh, it's it's kind of a, it's a two-sided thing. If this was a, uh, let's say, a renovation of, a, of an existing building and they needed to install a new parking lot, we would not require them to install the parking lot prior to come in to seeing us. So we do normally condition this kind of thing based on the approval because more than likely the applicant will not do this improvement unless they do get this approval. Okay. So they, they cannot operate until? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Thanks, Bill. Yes, for those who are um, in a position to go back and look at last night's council meeting, there was a lot of discussion about the, um, uh, about people, about not incentivizing people to pave over their entire front yard and there was a and in fact it was um that application was denied that that uh, mr tahan is is um is referring to for the record i would just say and change the ordinance so you can't pave over your pave over your front yard and not incentivize people to do it i mean the idea that after the fact we're going to deny a um a CUP to someone for the use doesn't make the concrete that's been poured go away. So, I mean, I think we have to look at that particular issue more, you know, outside of the context of just a short-term rental. That seems to be was the problem with that. So there, I've said my piece. Thank you. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Uh, first, uh, I need my memory refreshed as to what are the requirements for, for um, installing a parking pad, what material must be used to create that parking pad? Mr. Enman, the, the parking will typically need to be a all-weather surface. 
uh, we do we have for uh, these items that require additional parking on single family lots utilize, allowed people to utilize other methods uh, similar to uh, grass pave or some type of semi -perm permeable material uh, as long as it meets the installation requirement so we are trying to be flexible so people don't pave their yards uh, but uh, typically the zoning ordinance does require all weather surface similar to concrete or or asphalt and I, I will also note just to just to clarify if you're looking at your staff report on page uh, for agenda item 13 on page 6 the graphic is incorrect it shows uh, it shows the parking spaces one parking space number one being located in the right-of-way all three spaces are actually going to be located on the property when they do this extension uh, you can see underneath that grayed out area on on parking space number two the 54 foot measurement is measured from the property line back uh, so I do apologize for the confusion but with this proposal they will have all three parking spaces on the property not one overhanging in the right-of-way Planning Commissioner Inman, do you have any further comments? Yes, I have a question on the graphic that uh, Mr. DeHaan was just referring to. I want to know what is shown under parking space three. What is that rectangle? What is the dot, dots on there? What is that about? Mr. Inman, and for typically for uh, design purposes on on site plans dotted line uh, dots uh, in that hatching area is typically considered concrete uh, that uh, we will probably need to get with the applicant to find out what surface they want to install uh, and we can have that answer for you but typically uh, in drafting uh, design styles the dot the dotted hatch is a is considered concrete Mr. Inman, the existing two spaces are concrete. The intent is to pave the third space in concrete as well. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Well, it's a little hard to see exactly what is in on the ground now, but it appears that there's uh, maybe non-conforming size concrete there that runs all the way back to as far back as this spaces need to be. Um, I guess what I'm struggling with is whether or not to require them to have the space completed before the application is approved uh, or not. Um, and um, it's a close one because it looks it is behind the house, so to speak. It's not the front yard. And uh, since they do have paving back there now, it seems like they would most likely cooperate and do the third space. Um, and we wouldn't have an enforcement issue uh, as a result of it. So I, I guess in, in this case, maybe I'd not, not uh, require them to come back. That's all I got. Thank you. Seeing no more hands raised, the next three items, items 14, 15, and 16, will be presented by Janiza Badur. Janiza, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Agenda 14 is Mr. William J. Wright, Jr. The applicant is requesting to operate a short-term rental in a two-unit bedroom unit within a condominium development located at 909 Pacific Avenue, Unit A. The unit has one designated parking space on site to meet the second parking space requirement. Originally, the applicant submitted a letter of intent letting us know of his objective to lease a parking space at the 9th Street Garage once approved by, by the City Council. The garage is conveniently located directly across the street from the condominium. However, as of last week, the applicant purchased an annual parking pass at the 9th Street parking garage and has submitted a proof of purchase. This change has been reflected in the staff report and given to you with the supplements. We received a letter of concern on Monday regarding potential short-term rental tenants with vehicles longer than 18 feet 
posing safety hazards to other vehicles entering and exiting the property and blocking the entryway. Therefore, two additional conditions, condition two and three has been proposed in a staff report in which no vehicles longer than 18 feet shall be permitted in any parking spaces associated with the short-term rental. And the e ingress and egress area along Pacific Avenue shall be clear of vehicles to safely, for vehicles to safely enter and exit the property. Both conditions have been added to the, recently to the staff report and have been provided to you as supplements. However, no letters of opposition or support have been received. All requirements in a zoning ordinance regulating short-term rentals can be reasonably met with this application and staff recommends approval of this request subject to the conditions in a staff report. And the applicant is agreeable to all the conditions listed in the report. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by for any questions of the Planning Commission. Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Thank you, Bill. I'm wondering in these cases where an applicant acquires a license or a um, pass, whatever, for the city parking garage, uh, what period of time does that cover? For what length of time are they purchasing a uh, pass? Janiza, if you would, if you would please answer the the question for for this application. Yes. So the um, parking pass is an annual parking pass that is paid for by the applicant, and they are given one parking pass um, for the year and is only accessible to one person. Planning Commissioner Inman, do you have any further comments? Yes, I do. Um, will the uh, enforcement folks be? checking next year to see if the person acquired another parking pass. Mr. Enman, yes, we, that is part of our review. When we, when we do these inspections, we will double check to assure that they have renewed their parking pass. If not, it will be a grounds for us to bring it back to city council for potential revocation. Planning Commissioner Enman, do you have any further comments? No, thank you, Bill. Seeing no more hands raised, Janiza, your mic is open for your next presentation of item 15. Thank you, Bill. Agenda 15 is Carlin Creative Concepts, LLC. The applicant is requesting to operate a short-term rental in a two-bedroom unit within a condominium development located in the 909 Pacific Avenue, Unit A. The unit has one designated parking on site and to meet the second space parking requirement, the applicant has purchased an annual parking pass at the 9th Street Garage, which is conveniently located directly across the street from the condominium. Similar to the previous application, a letter of concern was received Monday regarding potential short-term rental tenants with vehicles longer than 18 feet, posing safety hazards to other vehicles entering and exiting the property and blocking the entryway. Therefore, two additional conditions, condition two and three has been proposed in a staff report in which no vehicles longer than 18 feet shall be permitted in any parking spaces associated with this short-term rental. And the ingress and egress area along Pacific Avenue shall be clear for vehicles to safely enter and exit the property. Both conditions have been added recently to the staff report and have been provided to you as supplements. However, no letters of opposition and support have been received and all requirements in the zoning ordinance regulating short-term rentals can be reasonably met with this application and staff recommends approval of this request subject to the conditions in the staff report. And the applicant is agreeable to all these conditions listed in the staff report. That concludes my summary and I'll stand by for any questions of the Planning Commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Well, I 
have a question. What vehicle is longer than 18 feet? That is a very good question, Mr. Redmond. I'm unsure of what some of the complaints have been. Uh, when we had other previous applications on the site, we parked the city truck in the space with no overhang. So uh, I'm not sure if there have been people that have come with a, a diesel truck or something much larger that, that may with an extended bed. So uh, I am unsure of that of where that comes from. Planning Commissioner Redmond, do you have further comment? Sorry. Um, yeah, the reason I ask is somebody made a comment a meeting or two ago that we don't have 18 feet vehicles, folks. And we have this standard of nine feet by 18 feet. And it sounds kind of arbitrary. As we've been working, I've been noodling around on the internet here. The only vehicle I can find that is 18 feet is a Chevy Suburban. Uh, that's a very large vehicle. We do not all drive Chevy Suburb Suburbans. I'm getting ready to buy a car. It's six feet less than 18. So, and I, I, I don't know where that standard comes from. Um, and I don't know why we would have an, a condition in here. I'm not saying take it out. I'm not objecting to it, but it kind of seems not to have a lot of meaning um, unless, you know, maybe there was a Chevy Suburban conference occurring at the house at some point. So anyway, I think we got to have a little bit more specificity with regard to what appears to me to be kind of an arbitrary um, standard on parking. Maybe that's out of some pattern book or, you know, uh, uh, something that, you know, engineers rely on as a standard. And I would understand that, but I, I don't know that any of us has an 18 foot vehicle unless it's a work vehicle. You know, George might because he's a contractor and the like, but um, that's a real long car uh, and there aren't many of them. So uh, anyway, that's my two cents on that. Thanks. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. Uh, you know, Dave brings up good points. Um, one thing is these spaces don't look like they're, you know, just eyeballing it, but they're probably not 18 feet to begin with. So they're, they're not striped. They're less than 18 feet just looking at the, the striping. Because I see vehicles um, on the aerial photo that just show, show them going well beyond the um, the striping. So that's that's probably where that comes in is they're sticking out, but they're not sticking out because they're longer than 18 feet. They're sticking out because the spaces aren't uh, it's slanted and um, but still they're uh, those spaces are are something less than 18 and I'm not sure what that is, but that's just the way it is. Janiza, your mic is open for comment. <laughs> Yes, I was just thinking of some examples of vehicles larger than 18 feet could be a camper van. Thank you. Seeing no more hands raised, Janiza, your mic is open for the next presentation. Thank you, Bill. Uh, agenda 16 is Mr. Nathan, Bo Nathan Bowling. The applicant is requesting to operate a short-term rental in a three-bedroom unit within a duplex structure located at 423 21st and a half street. The submitted parking plan satisfies the three required parking spaces, two of which uh, are located on the paver brick driveway, and the third is located in a single car garage. Since the property is within the boundary of the residential parking permit program, parking passes issued for the subject dwelling unit will be limited to two resident passes for each unit. Guest and temporary passes will not be permitted while the conditional use permit is active. Two letters of support have been received from the, from the neighboring property owners of the unit at 421st, 21st and a half street and the four adjacent unit at 417 and 419 21st Street and 21st and a half Street. All requirements of the zoning ordinance regulating the short-term rentals can be reasonably met with this application and staff recommends approval of this request with the conditions listed at the staff report. And the applicant is agreeable to all these conditions. That concludes my summary. I will stand by for any questions of the Planning Commission. 
Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. I, would, I wouldn't want to let you all down by not having a comment. Um, so I would like uh, to see that on the screen, the chart that is uh, short-term rentals in the vicinity uh, for everybody to see. It's in the uh, staff report. No, that's not the one I'm, I'm looking for, one that shows all the short-term rentals in the area. You, yeah, there we go. I just wanted to put that up on the screen just to make sure we're all conscious of what's going on in that particular area of the, of the beach as we consider amendments to the ordinance. Um, and, uh, you know, this looks like we got about 15 under review within a few blocks and plenty that have already been approved. That's my only comment. Seeing no more hands raised, the next application is that of Don Wyatt and will be presented by Aubrey Kreppelkopf. Aubrey, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Good morning. Uh, the subject property for item 17 is located adjacent to Linkhorn Bay, close to Laskin Road and approximately two miles from the ocean front. Property has been developed with a, sink, with a two bedroom single family dwelling, for which the applicant has requested a conditional use permit for a short, short term rental. Uh, two parking spaces are required, and both are being accommodated within the driveway on site. Uh, in staff's view, all requirements of Section 241.2 of the Zoning Ordinance regulating short-term rental use can be reasonably met with this application. One neighbor did call for more information regarding this application, but there is no known opposition to this request. In summary, staff is recommending approval of this request, and I will stand by to answer any questions from the Planning Commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any Planning Commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Okay. We will now move on to the next application. I'm sorry. No, we do have Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Uh, I was just going to say it appears that Mike's is having. I was going to say it appears that Mike is having some connection issues. I didn't know if you're aware of that. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. We will now move on to the next application of New Jerusalem Church, will be, which will be presented by Antoinette Folks. Antoinette, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Good morning. This item is located on 101 Bishop Thurgood Avenue in the R7.5 residential SeaTac area. There is a single family dwelling on the property. Next slide. The applicant is seeking a short term rental permit for their three bedroom single family dwelling. Therefore, three parking spaces are required. Next slide. The applicant plans to meet the parking requirement by parking one vehicle in the parking garage 
and two in the driveway. The zoning administrator reviewed the parking plan and deemed it acceptable. All other requirements of section 241.2 um, of the zoning ordinance, staff recommend approval of this request with the recommended conditions noted in the staff report. Also, there are no known letters of opposition. I'll stand by and take any questions. Planning Commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Uh, it appears to me that we've lost Commissioner Inman. I don't know if that was planned or not, but if it wasn't, um, I'd like to suggest that we pause for a minute and see if we can't reach him again. I know he has, um, you know, he feels strongly about this issue and these applications, and I don't want him to not be able to participate. Can we um, address whether or not uh, Mr. Inman is, I don't see him on here anymore, and, uh, and I want him to be able to participate. Can we see if we can't raise him before we go on? Redmond, we, we are aware of the, the problem and we have our IT staff looking into it right now. Madam Chair. Would you like to take a recess? Madam Chair, it may be appropriate to take a five minutes to make sure Mr. Inman gets back on. I agree. Let's do that. We will now take a five minute recess. Thank you.
okay. have Mr. Redmond with us. Great. We have uh, opened the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Sorry, no comments. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment if you wanted to comment on the previous item number 17. Thank you, I don't have any comment. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to Will Miller to present the next nine applications. Items 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 will be presented by Will Miller. Will, your mic is now unmuted. You can begin your presentation. Thank you, Bill. Um, the first item we have is item 19. It is at 1804 Unit E, Baltic Avenue. This is in the Beach District. The site is a 2,530 square foot parcel located within the OR Oceanfront Resort Form Base Code District, also in the Vibe District. A total of one townhome is located on this lot, and there are five townhomes on this row. Can we go to the next slide? According to city records, the dwelling, was, the dwelling was constructed in 2019, and there is no previous violations relating to short-term rental use found associated with this address. The property lies within the RPPP boundary where parking during the evening and overnight hours is limited. Based on this, a condition is recommended that would prohibit the use of guest and temporary RPP passes. There is an underground stormwater management system located to the rear of all the townhomes. You could go to the next slide right there. Um, unfortunately, uh, unapproved material had been placed over the stormwater management system. However, the applicant worked diligently with the DSC staff and has since corrected the issue. You could go to the next slide, please. So as you can see, that's the correction and that was approved by DSC. Um, there are three bedrooms in this short-term rental. There are three required parking spaces in this short-term rental. Next slide. The number of parking spaces on site is three, two in the driveway and one in the garage. That's the garage. Next slide. And the other two in the driveway. The site is located within the Vibe Created District, which is home to a myriad of commercial and residential uses with an emphasis on arts and culture. Surrounding area is a mixture of multifamily dwellings, duplex dwellings, single family dwellings, and commercial uses. Um, the parking plan depicts the three required off street, off street parking spaces with one in the garage as permitted by 242.21 of the zoning ordinance. The zoning administrator reviewed this alternative parking plan and deemed it acceptable. Based on these considerations, staff recommends approval of this request with the conditions um, shown on the staff report. And um, this concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of Planning Commission. Thank you. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any Planning Commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are candidates for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of item number 20. Thank you, Bill. This is at 409 Southside Road in the Beach District. The property is located within the RT3 Resort Tourist District and is composed of multiple lots, which when combined is approximately 14,409 square feet in area. The site contains one single family dwelling. According to city records, the subject dwelling was constructed in 1964. There are no records of zoning violations relating to short-term rental use uh, associated with this address. On-street parking is permitted 24 hours per day. Therefore, overflow parking beyond the minimum on-site spaces required could occur within the public street. The number of bedrooms in this short-term rental use is three. Could we go to the next slide, please? 
The number of parking spaces required is one space per bedroom, and they have three all within their property on the driveway. The subject site lies within the Rudy Heights subdivision, which is primarily home to single family dwellings. However, this particular property is somewhat unique, whereas it's the only single family dwelling located within the northern reach of the neighborhood and is flanked by a multifamily condominium development to its west and a marina to its east. While processing the short term rental request, staff discovered that two feet of the western portion of lot 18, which encompasses the overall lot, and you can see that two feet there, appears to have been created inappropriately. Staff did attempt to perform a title search, but was unable to go back far enough to find the deed or, deed or plat of origin, splitting the two feet from lot 18. Typically, we like to make sure that the lots are all appropriately recorded. However, because this is such a minor um, instance, um, the zoning administrator did allow this to continue to move forward. However, a condition has been added to the um, uh, it recommended to address this issue within, um, I believe, either 30 or 60 days of any favorable city council outcome. Um, based on this information, staff is recommending approval of this request, and I will stand by for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of item 21. I'm sorry, Planning Director Tahan. Yes. Uh, and just to clarify for, for the commission, if we can put it back on the screen, the presentation, uh, the portion of the building that does overhang onto lot 18 or that portion of the lot that's um, it may have been inappropriately created. All those parcels, 16, 17, and 18, are owned by the same property owner, which is why we're allowing it to continue to move forward. Uh, they, they will have to, as Mr. Miller noted, there is a condition for them to correct by plat the, the subdivision. Thank you. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of item 21. Bill, and thank you, Mr. Tahan. Um, this is 441 Southside Road in the Beach District, item number 21. This property is approximately 6,037 square feet and is located within the R7.5 residential district. The parcel contains one single family dwelling. According to city records, the subject dwelling was constructed in 1988, and there are no records of zoning violations relating to short term rental use found associated with this address. On street parking is permitted 24 hours per day. Therefore, any overflow parking beyond the minimum parking spaces required could occur within the public street. You go to the next slide, please. The number of bedrooms is three. The number of parking spaces required is three. And the number of parking spaces provided is three, with one being located in the carport and two in the driveway. The, this site is within the Rudy Heights subdivision, which is primarily home to single family dwellings. However, a multifamily condominium development and a marina are located just north of the subject property. The applicant's parking plan depicts three required off street parking spaces, one in the covered space of the carport, which is under the main floor of the home. And as you could see in that previous picture, the home is built on a pile or pier foundation. Um, and two within the remaining portion of the driveway. As permitted by Section 241.21 of the City Zoning Ordinance, the Zoning Administrator reviewed the parking plan and deemed it acceptable. However, a condition is recommended that assures the covered parking space will be available for short-term rental occupants at all times. Based on these considerations, staff recommends approval of this request with the conditions listed above. No, um, no known objections have been received uh, from by staff relating to this request. Uh, that concludes my presentation for that item. I will stand by for any questions. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. 
Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of items 22 and 23. Thank you, Bill. This is uh, located at 1405 Cypress Avenue. It's a duplex. Both units A and B uh, are part of this request. This is in the Beach District, and the home has yet to be constructed. The subject property, which is 6,250 square feet in size, is currently undeveloped. However, a new duplex is proposed for construction on this site. On January the 3rd, 2019, the Development Services Center approved the duplex site plans for the subject lot. This is prior to the adoption of the short-term rental code, which took effect January 16, 2019, or was adopted January 16, 2019. Building permits for the duplex were issued by the Permits and Inspections Division on March 12, 2020. No records of zoning violations relating to this lot, this empty lot, were found. The property lies within the RPPP boundary where parking during the evening and overnight hours is limited on the eastern side of Cypress Avenue and all parking is prohibited on the western side of Cypress Avenue. Based on this, a condition is recommended that would bar the applicants, applicants of the short-term rental from parking in the street during the restricted hours. Each unit, next slide please. These are depictions, uh, elevations, uh, architectural elevations of the, um, the duplex that will be constructed. Um, the markings of the material types were added uh, upon staff's request, added by the applicant. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is the landscaping plan, again, requested by staff uh, and submitted by the applicant. Next slide. And each unit is going to contain three bedrooms, um, therefore requiring three off-street parking spaces. One space for each of the units will be located in a garage with the other two spaces in the driveway. The site is located within the Lakewood subdivision, which is largely developed with duplexes and single family dwellings. The applicant's parking plan depicts a total of six required off-street parking spaces, three spaces for unit A, three for unit B. Moreover, two garage spaces will be used for the units. All remaining required off-street parking is located in the concrete driveway. Since the site plan for this duplex was submitted prior to the January 2019 short-term rental ordinance adoption, the proposed garage spaces were counted toward the required off-street parking space minimum as approved by the zoning administrator. However, a condition is recommended that assures the garage will be available for short-term rental occupants. One letter of opposition was, was received from the owner of 623 14th Street expressing their concern for the use, uh, the use's compatibility with adjacent permanent residential families. Uh, in her letter, uh, it says she strongly opposes this request. Based on the considerations read, and the conditions recommended, staff recommends approval of this request. This concludes my summary of this application and I'll stand by for any questions you may have. Thank you. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Can we go back and see a, a picture of the general area where this property is located? Thank you. Um, I, I'm always disturbed by applications that are coming before the property is built, but I, I guess we've done it before. Um, this, uh, I, of course, I can't tell too much from that picture what exactly that neighborhood looks like. It is pretty, pretty dense already. Um, thank you for showing the slide. Okay. 
Planning Commissioner Weiner, your mic is open for comment. Mr. Inman, I agree with you 100%. Um, I know we've approved these before, but something we need to, to think about, um, some of the notes I'm taking right now to when we start our meetings about going forward with the uh, resolution. Um, this, I guess this is Mr. Tahan. What's staff's opinion on this and why would we want to um, approve or give them a short-term rental until the property is built? Is there something, maybe something I don't know? I'm just asking a question. Maybe there's a reason why. I'm just curious. Mr. Weiner, in this application, the applicant had approved site plans uh, for the site prior to the adoption of the short-term rental regulations. Um, we analyzed this, as you know, we did have two applications in March, I believe, that we recommended a denial because they were not built yet, but those all received their permits and approvals much further after the adoption of the short-term rental regulations. So if they planned on uh, utilizing them, they knew that the rules were in place at that time. This applicant had already gotten approval for this duplex. Again, these properties are zoned R5D, which does allow for duplexes. Uh, and they received approval and just have not had a chance to build the property yet. So uh, because they received that approval, we felt that we, we were able to count the garage parking in this instance. But we do understand the same concern. We just uh, unaware of how we can relay the difference because I know that when we talked about it in March uh, there was concerns from some commissioners on drawing that bright line between if it's if it's built or not and I think there may be a different way to approach uh, purpose-built short-term rentals versus uh, other uses uh, short-term rentals that are used as um, supplements to income I guess so we can we could look at that and we can have further discussions but um, that's how staff came to our determination on that Planning Commissioner Weiner, do you have follow-up comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Khan. I appreciate that, and that's exactly what I wanted to hear, um, uh, just to make sure I was on the right page. Thank you. Planning Commissioner Oliver, your mic is open for comment. Um, I do have to say, I'm, I am. This is a little area right south of um, the Vibe District, and it sits. I think it sits right behind. Um, Star of the Sea Catholic Church is what is what I I can glean from the map the small very small map I am I am concerned with the fact that we are um, approving vacant lots in order for people to have short-term rentals um, we are starting I think we are headed in the direction of eliminating affordable housing we're part of our um, population, and I'm I'm just I'm just really not comfortable with the fact that people are just starting to build them in order to conduct a business, and I'm I'm just I just am not I just don't like the vacant lot and let's build a business on it in the middle of a neighborhood. I just I, I I'm not okay with this one. And I'm sorry, and I understand, but I just think that this is just kind of going down a different kind of rabbit hole. Planning Commissioner Inman, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. I, I think this is a an, an star example of what exactly we're concerned about happening uh, in that district of the city. Uh, it's already densely populated. It's already got other short-term rentals of a slightly more modest nature, and this is like maxing out. Let's build two of them. Let's get you know six parking spaces, and let's let's have our own hotel. That's what it is. It's going to be somebody's hotel to rent out. So it, it's just everything we wouldn't really like to see. So because it's not an existing property, I'm going to vote against it. Planning Commissioner Klein, your mic is open for comment. Thank you. This is Robin Klein. My question would be if they were not initially proposing this as a short-term rental property, but just wanted to build a duplex, 
And then after the duplex was built, they said, we would like to submit this as a short-term rental property. Would the thoughts be any different? Is the concern that they want to do the short-term before uh, before the property is built versus they could do the same thing once the property is completed? Thank you. Will, would you like to follow up? No, no this, so the discussion would probably need to be with uh, those uh, commissioners that have concerns with the, with the item. So Chairman Oliver or Mr. Inman. Uh, Ms. Oliver, would you like to? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Um, I think that it is a, yes, I think the concern would be um, exactly the same, that it is a new construction and now it has turned into a um, short-term rental. And in the past is what we're seeing is that there is a sort of direction taking place where people are actually building with the intent on those buildings serving as short-term rentals. And this one is just hasn't gotten there yet. And so my feeling would, would in fact be that, that same. If it was new construction and that's what they had intended, we've seen it on 27th Street, um, 28th Street, and in those areas. So I don't think my feelings would change on this particular application. Planning Commissioner Alcaraz, your mic is open for comment. Thank you, this is George. Uh, this um, directed towards Will. Hey, Will, on page two, I just want to get the feel of uh, the color code you got there. Um, looks like a light blue registered yellow under review. Uh, and of course, the other two I understand, but those two colors, uh, what do they mean? Can we go to the slide that you're referring to, George? Or could someone go to the slide George is referring to? Or are you talking about the short term rental, the vicinity map, George? Am I? That's it. Because actually, you know what? I can't, at home here, I can't see, I can only see George. Mr. Alcaraz, sorry. So, uh, Will, what we have is um, we have quite a few light blue colors calling it registered and then yellow under review. What's the two, what's the difference between the two? Oh, I know what you're talking, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Alcaraz. So, um, yeah, the registered ones are the ones that have come in, the short-term rental registrations that are going to claim grandfather status. Um, we are still working our way through those. Um, the um, the under review, to my knowledge, is the ones that are have put in for a conditional use permit. And then, of course, the approved and denied. But that's the distinction that, um, that when this was created that I was under the impression of. Now, Mr. Tahan may may correct me if I if I'm misspeaking. No, that that is correct. Commissioner Alcaraz, do you have follow up comment? No, I was just I was just overall looking at the uh, the vicinity map and it looks like within nine city blocks, it looks like only four have been approved and the rest are under review or have applied or have registered. I just wanted to know what they were, but thank you. Planning Commissioner Wall, your mic is open for comment. <clears throat> um, you know, that, that was a good question. And because there's one adjacent to it that looks like it's, it's registered. Did we review one at 629 uh, 14th Street? Is that one that the, the one that's called registered? Because I was looking, um, you know, that, you know, there's been quite a few applications, so some of them kind of blend together, but it looks familiar. Um, did we did we approve that one? And you know, if, if there's not an answer, that's fine. I'm just curious um, if that was one that we we've, we've reviewed. Uh, Mr. Wall, uh, based on the vicinity map, uh, the items that we would have 
been reviewed would either be uh, that would have been reviewed or either would have been yellow or, or that darker blue color so I do not believe that there was one that we reviewed uh, in that location you're discussing Commissioner Wall do you have follow-up comment no I don't I don't have anything yeah Commissioner Inman your mic is open for comment uh, this is sort of in response to Ms. Klein's question. Um, I, I just um, feel like if it hadn't been built, we don't, you know, we, we have, or should have a good indication of our approved site plan and all that for what it's going to be. But it's, it, it isn't in existence yet. I just, and I, I guess Ms. Oliver and I just have the, have a concern about approving a lot of uh, mini hotels that hadn't even been constructed yet under this ordinance. And there could be changes in the ordinance that, um, as we've been talking about, that would impact whether or not this would be approved after it's built. And since we've got a proliferation of short-term rentals in this immediate area, um, I would take an opportunity to deny it at this time. Thank you. Planning Director Tahan. Uh, this item, so um, we'll pull this from the consent. And I'm sorry, Mr. Wall, you're correct. At the corner of 14th and Cyprus uh, is the, was the Markley application that was heard by City Council last night. Um, and yes, it was the one, it is the property directly adjacent to it. And I apologize for that. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Commenting. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Planning Commissioner Alcaraz, your mic is open for comment. All my comment, we're going to hear it anyway, so we can get into it then. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. This is George Alcrez. Um, Mr. Tan, was it approved, the one on 14th Street? I remember that one now. That was the one we uh, we actually, there was a motion to disapprove because the parking was um, was over in the sidewalk area. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Alcrez, the City Council did approve the item last night with a modification to that it can only be operated as a one bedroom three occupant short term rental therefore only requiring one parking space so um, based on the application you had in front of you yes you did recommend disapproval because they were going to operate as a two bedroom the applicant um, agreed at uh, council's request to change it to a one bedroom listing only therefore meeting the parking requirement with one parking space Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Be having issues with his bandwidth, oh. so we're having a little bit of a lag. Okay, you want to. Um... Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Sorry, no thanks. We'll address it in the meeting. Thank you, though. 
Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of item 26. Thank you, Bill. Um, items, well, wait a minute, I think we missed 24 and 25. Yes, Will, 24 and 25. Thank you. Uh, 2565 Shore Drive. No units, comment. Units A and B. Um, no comment. In the Lynn Haven District, the property is approximately 6,000 square feet and is located within the R7.5 Residential District Shore Drive Overlay. According to city records, the parcel contains one duplex that was constructed in 1965. Give you a little history of Cape Story. Quickly, sorry. On October the 11th, 1965, the property was included in a comprehensive rezoning that impacted most, but not all, of the Cape Story by the Sea neighborhood. Specifically, there was a zoning district designation change that altered the types of allowable dwelling units on the parcels. In this instance, the previous zoning district allowed duplex dwellings. However, the new zoning district no longer permitted duplexes and instead allowed only single family dwellings. As a result of this 1965 neighborhood rezoning, this duplex became non-conforming relating to its use. This non-conforming duplex was later the subject of two separate requests before City Council, one in 2012 for an expansion to a non-conforming use and one in 2014 for a conversion of a non-conforming use. Both requests were approved by City Council. The 2012 request included renovations and additions to the existing duplex, structure, and parking area. On September the 12th, 2013, the property owner obtained the appropriate zoning approval for renovations and additions as shown on the 2012 City Council approved duplex site plan and architectural elevations. The 2014 request was not activated. He did not move forward with, with uh, anything associated with that 2014 request. On November the 11th, 2017, a building permit for those improvements was issued by the Permits and Inspections Division. Again, based on the 2012 expansion to a nonconformity um, request. As of this morning, those permits are still active. To bring this use into conformity, the applicant has the option of converting the duplex into a single family dwelling. However, the applicant expressed his desire to retain the existing nonconforming duplex as approved by City Council in 2012. Um, next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. I'll come back, but next slide. I'm going to get to the 2012 approval. There we go. Um, so you could look at that. No records of zoning violations relating to short-term rental use were found associated with the subject address. On-street parking along Shore Drive is not permitted. On-street parking along the east side of Kendall Street is also not permitted. However, on-street parking along most of the west side of Kendall Street is permitted 24 hours a day. Therefore, any overflow parking beyond the minimum parking spaces required could occur within this area of the public street. No parking signs are posted in all applicable areas of Kendall Street and Shore Drive. Kendall Street is just east of this property. There's one small um, unimproved portion of a lot right next to this. Uh, if we could go back to some of the older slides, maybe the pictures. The number of bedrooms in this short-term rental are three for unit A and three for unit B. The number of parking spaces are three each, and the number provided is three. The site is located within the Cape Story by the C subdivision. It's primarily home to single-family dwellings. However, there are numerous non-conforming duplex units scattered within this R7.5 single-family zoning district area of the neighborhood. In this case, the subject property contains one of those non-conforming duplexes, which was approved to expand and improve in 2012 by City Council. In addition, there are approximately five blocks of R5R duplex zoning district, which again does allow duplexes, found in the northeast corner of this community, which again contains mostly duplexes and is situated 100 feet from the subject property directly across uh, Shore Drive. Additionally, the site faces Shore Drive and is roughly 300 feet from the public beach of the Chesapeake Bay. The applicant's parking plan does depict six required off-street parking spaces within two distinct on-site compacted gravel and crushed shell parking areas. Staff received emails and telephone calls uh, from both supporters and from those concerned with the, uh, the original parking configuration. So a lot happened in the last 
couple of days. So this is the copy of the revised parking plan. You In your supplement packet, you got another previously revised parking plan, but this one came in late yesterday afternoon. I had to scramble to put it together this morning. Those that were concerned were the Cape Story by the Sea Civic League president and the Shore Drive Community Coalition. And what they were concerned about is Kindle Drive. Um, when vehicles come out from Kindle Drive and they look west, they're at a stop sign to enter Shore Drive and they're looking west. So we could go back to my street view picture. I should, yeah, keep going through the pictures. I think it's the first one. There we go. So um, when they come out where that stop bar is on the left side picture and they're looking west, um, they had uh, concerns of line of sight issues with one of the vehicles parked in the front of the house uh, in the original parking plan and even the revised parking plan, but not the most revised parking plan. Um, there's no line of sight study that's been done. The line of sight issues could be addressed by Rick Lohman. He can be able to give you a lot more information about that. Um, but because of this concern, again, there was a scramble yesterday between the three entities, the applicant, Shore Drive Community Coalition, and the um, Cape Henry by the Sea Civic League. And they created that revised plan that you saw a minute ago that's not in your packet, moving that where it says 15 feet with a little star down next to that driveway apron. They moved that space to the rear. The reason, another reason that this all happened was that driveway apron that you see also differs from what was originally approved in 2012 by city council. Um, city engineers found that that would not meet the uh, driveway apron requirements for a 35 mile an hour zone and therefore had to have that 15 foot radius and it had to be pushed 15 feet away from the Western property line, shifting that apron into almost the center. So those two things, line of sight concerns and apron, um, uh, making sure the apron meets public work specification standards all came up just very recently. And this is what the outcome was. Um, so, I'm not sure, from what I understand, I got an email just while we were talking that Cape Henry by the Sea, or Cape, Cape Henry Shores president is okay with this particular scheme, and I think Shore Drive Community Coalition is as well, but um, I believe one of them is registered to speak later. I'm sorry this was so long. I'm going to end this, but we did, based on all this, we are recommending approval of this with the conditions and this new modified revised parking plan and that little 15 foot area or where that little star is in the lower left would be a raised planting bed with low growing shrubs like liriope or something but something to keep people from parking there and causing any possible line of sight obstructions again i'm very sorry for the length of this presentation I'll stand by for questions Madam Chair, as we have six speakers signed up to comment, we will hear these items. Staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Better now? Thank you. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Seeing no more hands raised, we will move on to Will's presentation of item 26. Thank you, Bill. 329 25th Street in the Beach District. This condominium development is approximately 50,400 square feet located within the A24 apartment district, Old Beach Overlay. The parcel contains 28 condominium style townhome units located within five buildings. According to city records, the subject building dwelling was constructed in 1981. No records of zoning violations relating to short-term rental use were found associated with this address. The property lies within the RPP boundary where parking during the evening and overnight hours is limited. 
Based on this, the condition is recommended that would prohibit the issuance of guest and temporary passes. The number of bedrooms in this short-term rental is two. The number of parking spaces required is two. The number of parking spaces provided is two, one in the garage and the other in the driveway. The site is located within the resort area of the city. More specifically, the proposed short-term rental is part of the Atlantic Place condominium development. The surrounding area contains an assortment of duplexes, single-family dwellings, multifamily dwellings, and a city parking garage and mixed use mixed commercial use. The applicant's parking plan depicts two required off-street parking spaces, again, one in the garage and one in the driveway. Based on these considerations and the uh, recommended conditions, staff recommends approval of this request. I will stand by for any questions you may have. Thank you. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Okay. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Will's last presentation of item 27. Thank you, Bill. Uh, this is at 4005 Atlantic Avenue, Unit 102. This is in the Beach District. This property is approximately 14,500 square feet, located in the OR Oceanfront Resort Form Base Code District. According to city records, this lot contains 42 condominium dwelling units and was constructed in 1976. However, part of the building was previously a motel that was constructed at an earlier date. No records were found documenting the construction year of the older portion of the building. Condominium development appears to have 42 assigned off-street parking spaces or one space per dwelling unit. On-street parking is not permitted on this portion of Atlantic Avenue. However, metered parking is available west of Atlantic Avenue in the 200 block of 40th Street. No records of zoning violations relating to short-term rental use were found associated with this subject address. The number of bedrooms contained in this short-term rental is one. Number of parking spaces required is one. Number of parking spaces required provided on site is one. The site is located within the resort area of the city. More specifically, the proposed short-term rental is part of the Ocean's Two condominium development. Surrounding area is a mixture of high-rise multifamily dwellings, hotels, and other commercial uses. The applicant's parking plan depicts one required off-street parking space assigned to this unit. Based on these considerations and the recommended conditions, staff recommends approval of this request. This concludes my um, presentation. I'll stand by for any questions and thank you. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Summer Peebles who will address the next seven applications. is requesting a conditional use permit for a short-term rental at 4905 Mandon Road at the 7,500 square foot parcel zoned R7.5. Next slide. Single family dwelling has three bedrooms. Next slide. The required off-street parking spaces are accommodated within the driveway front of the dwelling unit. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. As this encroachment does not block any vehicular or pedestrian access way, and this lo is located in the driveway that is dedicated to the dwelling, the zoning administrator has deemed the parking plan acceptable. Parking on the street is allowed in this subdivision. All other requirements of section 241.2 of the zoning ordinance pertaining to short-term rental can be reasonably met. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Summer's presentation of item 29. Thank you, Bill. This applicant is located at 1047 Coastway Drive. This 1800 square foot parcel is zoned A12 apartments and is developed with a townhouse dwelling. Next slide. 
Next slide. There are two bedrooms in this townhouse, then thus two parking spaces are required. Next slide. Parking requirements can be met on site. Next slide. All other requirements of section 241.2 of the zoning ordinance pertaining to short term rentals can be reasonably met. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments including whether this application is a candidate for the consent agenda, as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Summer's presentation of item 30. Thank you, Bill. This application is located at 410 Terrace Avenue. And it's a 5,000 square foot parcel zoned R5S residential in the Shadow Lawn neighborhood. Next slide. Assessor's records indicate this single family dwelling has four bedrooms. Next slide. The required four parking spaces can be accommodated on site with the use of the two car garage. Next slide. Likewise, this property is located within the boundaries of the residential parking permit program, so a condition regarding the RPPP has been added. Next slide. While the conditional use permit is active, parking passes issued for the subject dwelling unit through the residential parking permit program shall be limited to two residential passes only. Next slide. Guest permits and temporary permits through the RPPP shall not be permitted. All of the requirements of section 241.2 of the zoning ordinance regulating short-term rentals can be reasonably met by the applicant. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Madam Chair, we have one speaker signed up to comment. We will hear this item. Staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, we will move on to Summer's last presentation, which is a combination of items 31, 32, 33, and 34. And this is also the last of the staff presentations. Bill? There are four units in this condo owned by Long Creek LLC, 4005 Atlantic Avenue, units 110, 111, 220, and 212. That's supposed to be 210 and 212 uh, for short-term rentals. Next slide. This parcel is approximately 14,500 square feet and zoned OR Oceanfront Resort District. Next slide. This lot contains 42 condominium units. Next slide. Each of the subject units is one bedrooms. Next slide. Two conditional use permits for short-term rental use have previously been approved on this property by city council. Next slide. The applicant's parking plan shows that each unit has one off-street parking space dedicated to them, thus fulfilling the parking requirement. And all of the requirements of section 241.2 of the zoning ordinance regulating short-term rentals can be reasonably met with this application. That concludes my summary. I'll stand by to answer any questions of the planning commission. Madam Chair, staff opens the mic to any planning commissioner with questions or comments, including whether these applications are a candidate for the consent agenda as there are no registered speakers. At this time, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no hands raised, that concludes the staff presentation. Before I turn this over to the chair for closing remarks, Marshall Coleman will review what we believe to be likely on the agenda for withdrawal, deferral, and consent for the formal session at noon. Marshall. Thank you, Bill. I have the following. There are no items requesting a withdrawal. Agenda item six for a deferral to the July 8th, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Agenda item 12 for an indefinite deferral. And agenda items one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 26, 27, 28, 29, 
31, 32, 33, and 34 for the consent agenda of both the regular and the short-term rental applications. If you have a correction or a comment, please raise your virtual hand to be recognized. Okay. Planning Commissioner Redmond, your mic is open for comment. We'll begin at noon, and this informal session is now adjourned.